All right, welcome back to the channel. If you're just joining me for the first time, welcome. I'm going to be talking about cleaning the Smith & Wesson 916A shotgun, which is the right version. There's also a Smith & Wesson 916T. I'm not as familiar with one of those. I haven't had one in my hand, so I'm going to break this one down. I'm going to assume that it's similar, but if you do this and you have a 916T, then do so at your own risk. But this is the 916A. <clears throat> and I'm going to break it down and do a good cleaning on it. All right, the tools you're gonna to need for this job, you're gonna need a, uh, first off, you're gonna need a screwdriver because there's a, with an eight inch shank, a pair of scissors, cleaning cloths or rags, scissors to cut the cleaning cloths. You're gonna need a solvent or oil of some sort. I'm not gonna get into all that. There's a, enough controversy about cleaning CLP versus oil versus whatever out there. I'm just gonna show you the way I do it here. I don't recommend using WD-40. Interestingly enough, it does say on the back that you can use these on firearms. I don't personally, and there's a thousand different solvents and cleaners out there you can buy for guns, but generally just a good bottle of CLP or gun oil of some sort is all that's needed in a rag. You're gonna need a cleaning rod, or in my case, I have a flexible one. It's uh, basically just a wire with uh, screws on each end that I can use various attachments on. I've got a multi-tool punch and a hammer to assist with the punch because there's a pin you gotta get out of there. So first step, we're gonna make sure that it's unloaded. You press your release lever here right behind the trigger. That allows you to open the action. All right, we're clear. Nothing in the magazine. Go ahead and close the action. There's two screw holes here. These are flathead screws. We're gonna pull that out. Inside here, there is a another flathead screw. It's really a bolt that holds the stock onto the receiver. So we're gonna use our screwdriver. Mine just so happens to fit in here. So I'm gonna take those out. If you look down in here, you can see the orientation of the screws. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. Loosen these up. You could actually just swing the butt pad out of the way. You don't even have to remove it all the way off. But it's just, these are pretty standard looking wood screws, honestly, because this is a, because it's going into that walnut. And you gotta be careful about the screwdriver you use. As you can see, mine's a little, it comes out with some rubber material there. Just want you to get it loose enough to get it out of the way. All right. I'm going to insert your screwdriver into this hole and I'm looking down into the hole you can see it with the daylight out here I tried to get it with the camera but it didn't quite work so lefty loosey right there is where it connects to the receiver and there's your bolt with a washer on it and I had somebody comment on my disassembly video that you could actually use, they used a socket with an extension, which I guess you could do that. I have not tried that myself, but if you've got one small enough to fit in that hole with the butt stock, that certainly would work. We're gonna get this pin out right here. Of course, I couldn't find my punch. I always put things back where you found them. So I'm gonna use this one instead. I'm not gonna use my normal one. set our pin aside next thing we're going to do is get this screw out right here so take a flathead screwdriver this one again fits pretty well you got to be careful on some older guns if you're gonna when you're using a screwdriver you know if you don't have an armorer's kit at home you really got to be careful there's your screw let's set that aside this thing's going to want to fall straight out but it won't come out that way you have to pull it out from the back Okay, and the cartridge cut off. 
Okay, so my cartridge cutoff just fell out, and I explained this in my disassembly video, but it sits inside the receiver just like that. This front tab, this front tab goes up under a metal piece in there, and it sits just inside there. Mine fell out. If you have to, you can use a screwdriver to help persuade it a little bit. Open your action. This screw right here, I'm going to take that off that's your ejector it sits in the gun just like that with this little flange towards the back and the screw i'm going to set that aside move your pump just to where you can see the extractor sticking out that's a little you see my bolt just fell out the actual guidance is you want to take your screwdriver and press down on it because what you're doing is you're disengaging it the pump connects right there your bolt comes right out of the back in my last video i did have somebody request that i take the magazine tube apart and the pump off of the gun so that's what i'm going to demonstrate I don't necessarily do this every single time that I clean it. This part's a little tricky because you got that magazine spring in there. So lefty loosey, we're going to pull the plug off the end of the magazine. And it's actually got quite a long thread. There's your spring, and the follower did not come out with it. There's your follower. You can turn this nut. That will free up the pump. Pull your magazine tube out. You can pull your grip off. And there's your pump mine's discolored it was replaced a few years back about 10 years ago uh, the original part that was on here the one problem I have I had out of this gun is that it actually came apart right there at the weld and I had to replace that so there you have just the barrel and the receiver by itself that's about as stripped down as i'm going to take it i'm not going to take the front side post off or anything like that so just to reassemble it you're going to do it in the same order there's a slot on the side of the receiver that the pump goes into i'm just going to place that in there for now and put your pump back on just as a guide until I get the magazine tube back on there. Thread your nut back on there. It's going to be pretty wobbly. I just want it to be in that track so it's guided in the right place. And I did try to put this in backwards one time. It seems to fit better one way just because of the hole where it sits into. It slides right in. You can see on mine, because it is stainless, you can see the line where it sits in the receiver. can be noted that the Remington 870 or maybe it's the Mossberg has two arms that come from the pump I would definitely say that that's an advantage that those shotguns have over this one spring goes back in put your cap on the end and these are really fine threads you Got to play with the minutes to get it on there and that spring's fighting you it's wanting to come out the other way once the threads bite though 
it's just a matter of putting it back into place and you tighten it down and you're good to go so for the bolt i've not been brave enough yet to disassemble the bolt all the way down so basically what i just do is take whatever solvent you're using to clean it with whether it be clp or gun oil rim oil whatever you've got coat it down real good and give it a good wiping i've had this gun 15 years and i've probably only put 500 rounds through it the entire its entire life same for the trigger assembly just take a little bit of spray oil or whatever you're using wipe it down give it a good cleaning and it's okay to leave a little oil most firearms manufacturers and gun folks would agree it's okay to leave a light coat of oil a lot of military firearms recommend leaving a light coat of oil now i know when you turn in your m16 in the army you're going to turn it in bone dry but they have humidifiers in their vaults Help keep that keep the rest under control so and i just take my oily rag with my solution wipe each piece down give everything a good clean. mine does have a little surface pitting on the receiver but with a little bit of oil and my rag I wipe this wipe the surface off and really depending on how much you shoot you're really going to want to clean inside this inside the receiver get each of the grooves the best you can inside the chamber what helps a lot is if you take a tool and run your rag in the grooves in each of the recesses Since I'm just demonstrating here, I'm not gonna sit here and clean this thing top to bottom and blab the whole time. I'm just giving you a, you know, sometimes this might take 30 minutes, depending on how dirty your firearm is. Sometimes it might take a few hours. So now the tricky part is the barrel. I have a wire cleaning rod. You can buy products, a snake, a boar snake, uh, just send it straight down the barrel. It's made of cloth and you pull it through and it wipes it clean. Take a little bit of your oil, or your spray, whatever you got. Spray it down the chamber, let it run down the bore. You could buy pre-cut cloths to go down through the bore. Or you can do, like if you're cheap like me, you can take an old t-shirt or a rag and you can cut the patches out yourself. You can buy them that way or make them. It's up to, that's strictly a user preference. I don't think there's really recommending either one way or the other. I guess the priority would be to, depending on how serious you are about guns, or your collection, and just run it. And I usually run just as many straight down the barrel the way the round travels as I do coming back. And, the, and this is going down the barrel the way the round travels. Pull it through. That cloth was a little bit small. And then I'll take one and run it right back the other way. A clean one, of course. I'm just using the same one because this gun's already clean. And this is demonstration only. So it's a lengthy process. I mean, you can sit here and cut these things out yourself. You have to make them pretty big, too, for a 12-gauge uh, for it to fit down the bore. And on a general range trip, I might have to use 15 or 20 of those. Take your rag. As I specified in my other video, this thing's supposed to have a rear sight fixture on it. And somewhere over the years, it's gotten, it came off and got lost. You can see the front sight post. I guess if you're going to shoot bean bags or non lethal rounds, or I don't know that you'd want to shoot slugs through this. It, the bore is not rifled, but it's obviously used for law enforcement purposes. I don't think that I explained this part very well in my other just simple disassembly video so you're going to take your bolt assembly on the extractors are going to ride in these two channels right here so there's lots that's got to happen at one time here this piece that we took out has a little foot that corresponds with the it's going to sit in there just like that this notch on that piece is going to ride on the bolt assembly to move it back and forth. 
So to get it back together, insert your bolt assembly. And we'll move that out of the way. Get your bolt in there and then move the pump back. So let it sit on that foot. So push down on your bolt assembly. And then this notch should have enough clearance to fit in there. Pull your pump forward and it should fall into place. So push your bolt back down and then it sits where it needs to go. So open it back up. We'll put our ejector back in. Take your screw. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. Tighten that back. Cartridge cut off. Take your trigger assembly. Slide it. Remember, we pulled it out of the rear. Close your action. So it won't go in if the action's open, I guess. Slide your trigger assembly back into place and you feel it's still a little loose. So you're going to try to line up with your pin hole and your screw hole. the gun up too much. Pressure release and your action works. Now we're going to take our stock same way we got it off. This is a little tricky because you got to kind of fish around for it a little bit. I'm going to drop. raise it upright. blanket to do my gun videos on both on my bench at the range and here at home we'll put this back in there and this top screw if you're a real high speed gun guy you might have a ratcheting screwdriver that'll fit this maybe some of the new armorers kits all right, and the gun is ready for one final wipe down. Usually take a little bit of my oil of choice, whatever that is for you, my oily rag. Give it a good wipe down and a light coat of oil. Keep all the components nice and fresh. I don't take any pledge to the wood or anything like that. I don't want it to slip out of my hands or fall out of my hands with the recoil of a 12 gauge and some ding dong like me put pledge on his gun. I'm worried about all that. So, but as far as the metal parts itself, just give it a little protectant and you should be good to go. So thanks for watching. Thanks for coming by and I'll see you in the next one.